ओम ज्ञान चिमीरंधस्या ज्ञानं जनशलाकाय चक्षुरं मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः mind the gap <laughs> those of you who well i suppose all of you go around london from time to time maybe you don't but it's it's like a symbol of london isn't it mind the gap on the in the tube station sometimes when the train comes in if there there's a gap so if if you slip and your foot goes in between the train and the platform well going to be in a lot of trouble so the sound comes out mind the gap now what on earth am i talking about that for what's that got to do with krishna consciousness well nothing directly except we used to a lot of this is way back in the 1970 a lot of back to god had distribution in the underground for a short time until the authorities there stopped us but uh mind the gap is good advice taken transcendentally <clears throat> this uh gap is uh one time when i was speaking with jyoti shekhar prabhu from whom i took many anecdotes which went in this book shri bhakti siddhanta vaibhav he once told me that once when bhakti siddhanta saraswati tako was speaking to his disciples he said ami bolchi tumra shuncho kintu amader madde ekta fak chole jacche which means i'm speaking and you are hearing but there is a gap going on between us i mentioned that in the in the book that that statement really struck me there there is a gap ah uh, there there is one uh, essay by narayan das adhikari um which appears in the harmonist he was the principal writer for the harmonist uh i'm paraphrasing it now his his use of english was superb uh he wrote that there there is a, always a gap between the savior and the saved so that brings to mind also that uh, we we say chokudan deloje janme janme prabhu say even if one comes from the condi- by the mercy of the savior if one comes to the position of being saved and goes on to save others still there's always a gap there's always a gap between the savior and the saved at least the formality is there at the very least the formality should be there that the disciple always respects the guru even if the disciple uh not exactly supersedes but outdoes or outshines the guru and in the disciple's mind he can never outshine the guru because jogata bichare kichuna hi pai tomara karuna sha if the disciple thinks that if i am to examine my eligibility i find the total account amounts to zero but praying to his guru this song begins guru dev kripa bindu dia guru dev give a ocean, drop of mercy he says that uh, your mercy is all that i am made of but factually we see that in terms of of practical dissemination of krishna consciousness sometimes the disciple does more than the guru and maybe in terms of transcendental realization also bhakti siddhanta sarasar tako in terms of serving the preaching mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu did more than uh gorki shodas babaji maharaj and bhakti vinod tako and shila prabha did more quantitatively than bhakti siddhanta sarasar tako but they all uh depend on the mercy of the previous acharyas they they 
in their own mind they couldn't have done that without the mercy of the previous acharyas as isaac newton is often quoted as saying that if i have seen further than others it's because i have stood on the back of many great persons <laughs> So it may be that the disciple is more than the guru, although not in one sense only. Srila Prabhupada writes about that, and he says that by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, uh, the, the follower of Nityananda Prabhu can do even more service than Nityananda Prabhu. And he said to his disciple that all of my disciples should do more than me. I know that's even all of Prabhupada's disciples put together, it seems to be a very great task to do even as much as what Srila Prabhupada did. Uh, but generally the, 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 the disciple always placed himself in a position of being uh, lower. Generally, no, not generally, always. Uh, and Generally we see that the, the disciples are in a position that is uh, the gap, gap position, in lower position. Sometimes the disciple, the, the guru himself may recognize that the, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have such a disciple. The Pundarik Vidyaniti said this about Gadadha Pandit. And Ishvara Puri said this about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Imagine having... Imagine having Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, whew, it'll have a lot of courage to to have such a disciple. To, how can you accept such a person, the, the supreme personality of Godhead Himself, as your disciple? Uh, so there is a gap. Of course, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about guru disciple between speakers and hearers. Even in even in a classroom in the school or in the university. Um, it's understood that there's a, there's a gap between the lecturer and the students. The students are there to learn, the lecturer is there to teach. In a symposium it might not be like that. They're all peers who are all discussing and once one has the lectern at a time and then someone else gets up and, sp gets up and speak. But in the matter of education, uh, there's always a gap. Of course, there's a physical gap also, but we're not talking about a physical gap. Is it? Obviously, there's some distance. It's not that the, the listeners all cram right up to the speaker. But there's, there's a gap in knowledge and understanding and in spiritual terms, realization. But that gap has to be closed. That's the whole point. Uh, that the those who are not in knowledge or have less knowledge and understanding and realization and commitment, they should come up to the level of the speaker or the guru. Uh, and that is possible if the disciple takes the attitude, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chitete Koriya Aikya Ana Kariha Monayasha. Srila Prabhupada often stressed the importance of these lines particularly. That the words from the lotus mouth of the Guru, I make them one with my heart and don't desire anything else. Then immediately the gap is closed. If there's a gap of interest, then the disciple can never be a disciple. If he, I'm a disciple, but I have other priorities, then he can never get the real benefit of being with the guru, just like uh, the mosquito may have very close access to the, to the guru, but <laughs> he doesn't get the benefit of that close access, rather his disturbance. So closeness is by this oneness of heart uh, that I, I I want to make the instructions of my God I, I, the one with my heart I don't want anything else 
And in this way one can be very close to the Guru, even if physically distant. But one can be physically very close to the Guru and actually very far away. Bhaktisdhan Sarasar Thakur said to one of his disciples, one of his first and most prominent disciples who had preached widely and brought many disciples to Bhaktisdhan Sarasar Thakur. And at the end, toward the, just as Srila Bhaktisdhan Sarasar Thakur was lying on his bed shortly before passing away, this sannyasi, he was actually the, the third sannyasi of the, well, the third sannyasi of the Gorya Mark. The first was Bhaktisdhan Sarasar Thakur himself. The second was Bhakti Pradeep Tirta Maharaj. So the third sannyasi, uh, Bhakti Stan Sarasar Thakur said to that, uh, you've, never, you've never known me. <laughs> it's been close, but he never... There's all that, that section in Bhakti Stan Vaibhav, the seer and the seen. There's a whole description of one respectable professor who spoke about how he was very close to Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Stan Sarasar Thakur said, you know, you never saw Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He said, what do you mean? I, 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 so many times I visited his house. He treated me respectfully. You were also present there. So many times you saw me in his presence. He said, no, you never saw Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Seeing is by hearing. <clears throat> Uh, so the the gap should be closed immediately. If they, 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 there should be no self interest, the only inter the only interest is how to serve and please and hear from. That doesn't mean that the gap is the gap is closed in one way by adopting this attitude, but still there's a gap in knowledge and realization. Uh, and then one has to. Hear, go on hearing. Uh, I, I was speaking about the physical gap that uh, one one should not. One may be far away from the guru, or one may be very close, but the, 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 the physically, uh, being close physically can be very dangerous because familiarity breeds contempt. So, in some ways, it may be good to. Keep some gap. Don't stay close. I've heard from several devotees. Well, the, the uh, especially Hari Shauri Prabhu. I'm not sure that if that'll come in his final volume of of the, his Transcendental Diary. Uh, I hope he publishes it. It's been a long time since the the penultimate, supposed to be the penultimate volume came out. But he was Srila Prabhupada's servant, and at one point he thought that now I should stop being Srila Prabhupada's servant. Because he, he, he felt, he said to Srila Prabhupada himself, he felt that I'm just getting a little bit too familiar, so I, better I go on and do some other service. <coughs> So closeness, physical closeness, can be dangerous also. We, we, we often think we'd like, wouldn't it be great to be with Srila Prabhupada? But sometimes those who are very close, they may not have been very close in terms of service. Uh, some of them, and another of Prabhupada's disciples, Gagamuni Prabhu, told me that my whole relationship with Srila Prabhupada is based on personal exchange. And when I saw that Prabhupada is going to leave the world, I also left. I left ISKCON. Uh, I, I left direct service because my whole relationship with Prabhupada was to go to him personally and tell him what I've been doing. And he did a lot of service. But he thought, if that's not going to be there, then he, he couldn't imagine Krishna consciousness outside of that. So, um, he said to me, this was actually many years ago, he said to me that you are more fortunate because you have stayed in the service. 
whereas I left that service, a direct service to the mission. So we want to come close, but close doesn't necessarily mean physically close. Of course, if everyone thinks, I don't want to get physically close to the guru, then he may just, there'll be no one around him. So someone has to do personal service also. That's also required. <coughs> Many disciples ask me, I'm speaking in the role of a guru, although my principal role is not as a guru, but as a disciple. One, one who sees his principal role as a disciple can begin to think about uh, on the order of the guru being a, uh, being a guru to others. So uh, many disciples ask me for some special instruction. I often tell them, uh, well, to follow all the basics first of all. If you can chant 16 rounds and follow regulated principles, read the books, do all, are you doing all those basic things? Do those things first. And the, they think some special. I, I'm special. I need something special. They tell me to go and preach on the moon or on Atlantis or something like that. Well, first, first thing, get up in the morning, chant your rounds. Do that first of all. And then maybe we'll... And special, that's special. We don't think chanting Hare Krishna is not special. All the instructions are special instructions. Uh, <clears throat> this mentality comes over in uh, spiritual life also that I... Ha I have to do. I have to show myself to be something very special. I have to be better than others. Of course, everyone who asks like that is not. Uh, and it's not necessarily that they have that mentality. Bhaktivinoda <coughs> Thakur says, "Koro more atmasat. Make make me yours. You know, take me over." Um, Tavaivasmi, Tavaivasmi, Najivami, Tvaivina. This prayer is there. Uh, that I, I am yours, I am yours. I cannot live without you. This is a prayer of Raghunath Das. Uh, so this, this uh, attitude that we don't want a gap. Our whole material existence is caused because we have put a gap between ourselves and Krishna. There should be no gap. But we have made a gap. We've decided we want to be distant from Krishna. So to bridge the gap, that's an English saying, to bridge the gap. That is, Krishna consciousness means to bridge the gap between ourselves and Krishna. Bridge the gap means that uh, just like if there's a chasm and you put a bridge, then you can cross it. Otherwise, you can't cross it. So that's bridge preaching. <laughs> All preaching is bridge preaching. It means that preaching means bridge preaching because we're supposed to be on, in spiritual consciousness and others are in material consciousness. And the whole preaching means to bring people from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. And there's a big gap. So the, the, all preaching is bridge preaching. So this idea of bridge preaching, it's just a matter of where... At, at, it means making contact with materialistic people, somehow getting their attention, and diverting their attention from the material to the spiritual. That is preaching. However it's done, that is preaching. So... Uh, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada's contribution, we should never forget, is unique. I remember in one class in Mayapur, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he said, we should, never, we should never forget that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I thought, well, how could you forget that? It's just, uh, how could you forget? <laughs> I, I was surprised by those words of Srila Prabhupada. So if I say, well, we should never forget that Srila Prabhupada is unique, you might think that, well, how can you forget? Obviously he's unique. But we might, uh, it, even now, we may, we may underestimate what Srila Prabhupada did. Because uh, there, Krishna consciousness is spread all over the world, and uh, 
just like yesterday we went for Harinam Sankirtan in around the town center of Crawley and mostly people were in their reactions they they it ranged from neutral to favorable they in their facial expressions uh and many people appreciate devotees and the, the message of as they see it of something spiritual something nice something good but it wasn't always like that either in the west or in, now in india the situation is very favorable for preaching krishna conscious but it it wasn't always like that there was a lot of opposition within india to this movement so what i i remember i put that in that book jai shila prabhupada in the early 1980s coming to london and thinking what if i was to come here alone with no devotees and no association could i do anything to preach krishna conscious i thought no i couldn't maybe nowadays someone could but who could do that to, to go into new york, new york city or anywhere in america and establish krishna consciousness apparently there were, there was some some premananda bharati at the turn of the the, the the juncture of the 19th and 20th centuries he went to america and he preached krishna consciousness and had some following i don't know exactly what his understanding of krishna consciousness was but apparently he was a gorya vaishnav of some sort or other so uh who preceded Srila Prabhupada, but he didn't make any lasting effect. Um, but Srila Prabhupada, he went to the West, and the people who took interest in him were the hippies. Now, can you imagine how much gap there is between Srila Prabhupada and the hippies? I don't, it's almost unimaginable. The hippies, they themselves deliberately made a gap between themselves and respectable society as you could call it and respectable society is all that's also a huge gap between that and prabhupad this uh, bon maharaj who also went to the west in the 1930s and then later he sometimes visited also he said i could have also did i could have also done what swami maharaj namely ashila prabhupad did but i didn't like to mix up with all these i liked these low class people i liked to mix with the intellectuals that was it wasn't my propensity to mix with these low class people well it wasn't shila prabhupada's propensity either uh, but he found there was some response there whereas among the more intellectual or respectable people there was no serious response was he found among the hippies that even though there was a huge gap between Srila Prabhupada and the hippies he was Srila Prabhupada is the perfectly cultured person and the hippies were delighting in being uncultured but Srila Prabhupada was able to bridge that gap out of his compassion he he found as often Srila Prabhupada said that preaching means if you find a spark of interest in krishna consciousness you have to fan that and make a fire this man came yesterday who was he came from the he saw the hari nam he got a flyer so your your flyers worked they weren't even all distributed no there's still size still some here but one man came and he, he's interested I must say that in all my time I was uh distributing books in England. It wasn't that long actually. I was from 1975 to about 1977 and quite a lot of that time was in Ireland also. Um we didn't meet many people who were actually interested in the philosophy. Somehow we got the books out. Do you do you find people are interested you interested in the philosophy much distributing books? you do yeah the times have changed book distribution makes the atmosphere favorable the more we preach the better things get 
But I remember at that time that there was very little interest. We were getting the books out somehow or other. But there wasn't much real interest. In it. But this man, he, he was, he's ready, it seems. He, he immediately appreciated many of the things that I said. That, uh, one thing he really responded to was when I said that you can't have spiritual life if you're engaging in eating meat and taking intoxication. He, he, that really uh, chimed with him. So the spark has to be found. It's, it's hard work, actually. We often say we're not making so many devotees these days. Well, when people come, we have to take time with them. Uh, mostly Indian people are coming. But they also need to be preached. Not that some, uh, it seems to me that many devotees in the West think that in India we just, uh, we just sit around on a big, on a big seat and give a few lectures and then people come and buy so many books and then they all become devotees. It's not like that. It, it's, it's hard work to bring people into Krishna consciousness, although people are closer to Krishna in India than in the West. So, but uh, Srila Prabhupada, what he did, there was such a tremendous... Go- and that's why I think nowadays there is a danger. We may forget how great Srila Prabhupada was. Some of Sh- some uh, Goryamat preachers, they went to the West subsequent to Srila Prabhupada's going. And it's one of them in particular seemed to think that he was the... He's the, the next great Acharya after Srila Prabhupada and he's, he's practically on the same level or maybe more. But uh, he doesn't... The, the field was already made for him by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada made that field. And, and who else could have done that? He was able to bridge that tremendous gap. How did he do it? Well, it's out of great compassion, extending himself hard work uh, and uh, desire to please his guru. He wanted, he, he very much wanted people to be Krishna conscious and he was prepared to do whatever was required to help people to be Krishna conscious. In the beginning, he spent a lot of time with the early devotees and some of them became strong and then uh, that that was Srila Prabhupada's transcendental management system that he he worked particularly with an inner coterie of disciples and then they were expect, expected to to train others. Mm. <coughs> so Srila Prabhupada, there wasn't only a cultural gap, but even in other way, a cultural gap means the whole way that Western people think, of course, that's a huge generalization to say the way that Western people think. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada's manner of understanding, Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter back to India, one, one of the many letters he wrote. He, he wrote talking about the cultural condition of people in America. He said, one of the things he noted was that they, after passing stool, they smear their backsides with paper. <laughs> it was just inconceivable. How could, they just smear their backside with paper and pull up their pants and go out of the toilet. That's it. Srila Prabhupada didn't describe it in full detail, but it's unimaginable to even the lowest class person in India to, that they would that you could, after passing stool, you wipe your backside with paper, pull up your pants, and some of them might wash their hands afterwards. Otherwise, they just walk straight out of the toilet and, and go on with what they're doing. It's, uh, and it's something else Srila Prabhupada noted, this, that they, they drink coffee in bed. That's considered to be something really royal. If you can have... You lie in bed, and they're even... Uh, you have coffee coffee-making machine at the side of your bed so that when you can wake up in the morning, before you get out of bed and brush your teeth, you drink coffee. It's just so uh, so far away from any culture. Even in one purport, in the first canto, Srila Prabhupada writes about uh, 
Vedic civilization, one of the things he says, there are no toilets. Now, in modern civilization, it's considered that, well, you have to have a toilet to be civilized. But in Vedic civilization, if you have a toilet, you're uncivilized because civilized, civilized way to pass stool, I know this isn't the highest level of spiritual life, but Srila Prabhupada did mention it in one of his purports. You go away from the residential area and pass stool. Not that you do it in your, right in your house, right next to the kitchen. <laughs> and then the water which comes out of your tap is recycled stool water. Yes. <laughs> so, what a difference. There, there was one time, one of Srila Prabhupada's female disciples ex was trying to explain to her, the, explain to Srila Prabhupada the problem that she had living in the ashram and eventually Prabhupada couldn't understand what's the problem what's she talking about and then another after she left another of Srila Prabhupada's disciples female disciples explained to him that she's a lesbian and 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 she's attracted to other females and Prabhupada is like the penny dropped. Oh, he said, oh, really? I said, I never heard of that. <laughs> he said, in India there are some low-class men who are attracted to other men, but we never, heard of, we never heard of this before. So it's a big cultural gap uh, between Srila Prabhupada and the people that he was preaching to. There was a gap of culture, a, a gap of language. I, I, the way Srila Prabhupada spoke was uh, very, at least I know myself, in general it was difficult for people in the West to understand because it was, the accent is quite different. I, I know myself, the first month I joined, the, the, the first month that I was, uh, maybe more than a month that I was, let me see, I think after after a few days, I joined in the manor, after a few days I went to Berry Place and then, yeah, so I was in the temples, and uh, where all the time there were the lectures of Srila Prabhupada were playing on the using the latest technology, which was these uh, cassettes of tapes, and from time to time they'd all get screwed up in the machine, and then they were finished. Every time you played it, the quality got less. So uh, I was hearing this, but I couldn't understand anything. I couldn't understand because Prabhupada's accent and mostly his accent, I couldn't follow. It took about a month before I could understand. I was, someone would say, oh, you hear what Prabhupada said? No, what did he say? Like, I couldn't understand it. It, it. it just sounded to me, I could pick out a few words here and there, but otherwise it, it just sounded like one... Uh, like a, 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 just some sound. I couldn't make it out. So that was another uh, a problem. That, that uh, And sometimes, actually, quite often we can understand from the questions that Srila Prabhupada asked and the answers that Srila Prabhupada gave that he didn't always understand what other people said also. And I also find that problem in speaking with... Uh, when I speak in Bengali or Hindi sometimes, well, even in English for that matter, I, I don't always understand what people say, especially if they When I go to America, even England, because the language has changed. And in America, people say things, I don't know what they're talking about, because they use all these expressions. I, I, guess, uh, I, I was speaking with some devotees a couple of years ago, and one of them said, spoke about someone's opera Winfrey moment. And I said, well, What's an opera Winfrey moment? Then he had to explain. Do you know what it is? It's there's some some TV show in America. Uh, anyway, it's, it takes a few minutes to explain the whole thing. It's like the greatest moment in your life when you you get anyway. So like that, it is, it's something to do with American TV. I didn't understand it at all. Uh, so that that was I, that's part of the cultural difference. That it's, it's, uh, language difference, uh, but most of all, the, the differences are in difference of outlook. Because Srila Prabhupada is 
promoting a way of life based on selfless service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which in America no one had ever heard of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the whole idea of selflessness was quite opposite to the culture of selfishness, which is materialistic culture, and particularly American culture. The, in, the hippies and the straights, as they called them, they were the same in as much as they were selfish. They both wanted sense gratification. The hippies had some idea of love and peace and let's all live together, but ultimately they wanted sense gratification. So Shila, the difference in outlook and that human life is meant for self-realization. No such idea. Well, you could say among the hippies, there was some dabbling in spiritual life, but nothing serious. As Jayadveta Swami said, all the real hippies, they joined the Hare Krishna movement. Those who are really serious about looking for spiritual life. But most of them were, were very, actually all of them were very deeply influenced by uh, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, by uh, quasi, not even real Mayavad. I mean, if it was real Mayavad, at least they'd have some culture. And Mayavadis in India, they, the, the traditional ones, they, they, they have a lot of culture. There's Shankaracharya is recognized as the, the, the father of Mayavad in this Kali Yuga. He's recognized as having saved Sanatan Dharma from the onslaught of the Buddhists which is not necessarily a fully accurate description, as even in the modern age his m most respected disciplic descendant, that Chandrasekharendran Saraswati of Kanchipuram, he disagrees that Shankara saved uh, Hinduism, for want of a better term, from Buddhism, because mostly Shankara, he converted... Hindus to his the, the Mimangsakas. Anyway, I'm getting off topic there. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 the hippies, they had the Mayavad without the culture. Like we see in, in this new age in the West, and now there's bhakti being taken up in the West, in America more than here. But so the people are becoming American Hindus, but without the piety and the culture of the that people in India have and the, the whole background of dharma. So the mixture of American hedonism and Mayavad, it's a, I mean both of them are bad, but when you put them together, then it becomes really bad. So out of all of those hippies who are all mixed up with Mayavad, Srila Prabhupada, he, he really had to hammer them, to hammer out the Mayavad, which is apparent in that, uh, that book, The Hare Krishna Explosion, gives a, an insider's view on the early days of Krishna consciousness in America. I agree with us, especially there's one... Uh, Incident which I uh, put in my book on speaking strongly in Srila Prabhupada's service, in which Prabhupada day after day after day in the lectures was hammering against impersonalists. And uh, Mukunda, now Goswami, who was there at the time, he, he, he told me that, I think he put it in his book also, he must have told many others also, that... Uh, that he himself, Mukunda, and maybe others, they thought that was Srila Prabhupada, he's, he's Swamiji, as they called him, he has some something about some people in India that he keeps on, he can't get it out of his system, he keeps on talking about these people, these Mayavadis, and some, some sectarian dispute in India, but what's it got to do with us? But... Uh, But then he came to realize that, well, we are the Mayavadis he's talking about. So, yeah, then, 
So, uh, especially Prabhupada took uh, took uh, took up dispute about Doctor Radha Krishnan's commentary on Chapter Nine, Text Thirty Four of Bhagavad Gita. Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto Madhyaji Mang Namaskaru. Um, Yuktvaivam Atmana Matparayanaha. Yeah, it's the lesser known version of that verse. <clears throat> so, uh, Dr. Radha Krishna in his commentary says that it's not to the person Krishna that we must surrender, that we must think of, but the unborn eternal within Krishna. And at this point, um, Keith Bhagta Ke- or Keith Ham later to be known as Kirtanananda, he objected. Uh, after Srila Prabhupada many times, and then one time this Keith Ham objected. And he said, well, what's wrong with it, actually? And, and, then, and he gave a long talk about quoting from, from Shankara and, and this uh, Lao Tse and... Buddha and Martin Luther King and the Bible and all kinds of people. He went on and on and on and Srila Prabhupada was sitting on his dais. He, he was getting angrier and he, but he didn't say anything. And then, then Keith paused and Swamiji said to him, have you finished? And no, he hadn't finished. And he went on and on and on with more quotes on and on how actually it's all one. And then again he stopped him and said, Have you finished? Yes, he finished now. And then Prabhupada, he said, Krishna says unto me, Why do they deny Krishna? And Prabhupada was so angry. And they, 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 you have to read it in that Hare Krishna explosion. They were just, they felt like they were blasted away by Prabhupada's anger. He was so angry with them that they were, he'd, he'd gone on speaking. There's this, there's this idea that, well, you just speak and then everyone will understand. And we, oh, yes, okay, Swamiji, yes, yes, you're right. Krishna is the supreme and impersonalism is incorrect. Yes, all right, thank you very much, Swamiji. But it wasn't like that. He blasted them so heavily, they felt as if they were being hit by a tornado. Now, if you can consider, they were his only followers, which he had after months and months and months, and he could have just Quite likely they could have just said, okay, Swamiji, it was nice knowing you, and maybe we'll see you after a few lifetimes. They could have just gone. But he wanted to blast out that Mayavad in them. And if they went away, he was prepared for that also. But he wasn't prepared to have them being his supposed to be followers and still quoting Ramakrishna and Shankara and Buddha. He wanted them to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's what he found necessary ultimately to close that gap was just to kick on their heads not literally but uh, to blast them and uh, not blast them just by saying but saying philosophically Krishna says unto me he was speaking to Arjuna he's a person why do you deny his personality on what grounds can you deny his personality is simply envious. So fortunately they did. Then right after that Prabhupada organized the first initiation ceremony and he told them afterward what it now what it means to be a disciple. You have to accept the guru as good as God. Well what? You told us the guru is not as good as God. Well you have to accept not the guru is not God. Not God, but you now you you accept. Now I'm not just speaking you have to accept. You don't, you're not that you're just sitting, listening and thinking, oh, Swamiji says this and Buddha says that and Shankara says that. No, you have to, you have to accept. Chitte te korea aikya. So he's, what, he, what he had to go through, as Srila Prabhupada said, quoting Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur, to make one devotee takes gallons of blood. <coughs> Uh, 
Srila Prabhupada closed that gap. It seems in the case of Kirtananda, he never really got that Mayavad out of him, and later it became apparent, even in Prabhupada's presence and after Srila Prabhupada's uh, disappearance from this world. Srila <coughs> uh, Prabhupada's whole effort was to close that gap, bring them close. Bring close means, that's what initiation means. Or the, the Vedic initiation means upanayanam. It means, it means literally to bring within the vision. The, the disciples should come close. Come and sit and listen. Uh, should be, upanaya means they should be upanita. They should come close. Uh, come close here. <coughs> If there's no faith, then it's very difficult to bridge the faith, bridge the gap. There has to be faith. Knowledge and realization, that it's expected the Guru has more knowledge and realization. Or even if they're senior devotees speaking, or newcomers are hearing. Uh, but if there's no faith, then they can't absorb what's being said. And Srila Prabhupada, he detected that with, with his initial followers, that they were listening to him, but they didn't really have faith, because they were, they were still in the thinking that Mayavad is correct. And I remember one devotee told me, this uh, disciple of Prabhupada, this is when Srila Prabhupada is still present, he told me that two years after I was initiated, I realized that when Srila Prabhupada was talking about Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he wasn't talking allegorically. He was, this devotee was so steeped in Mayavad that when he heard Srila Prabhupada talk about the, uh, the Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he thought, well, yeah, well, yeah, okay, all right, but that's, that's just an allegory. That's just an allegorical way of speaking. That's why if you go among Mayavadis and talk, well, yes, Krishna is supreme, he is the supreme person, they'll say, yes, yes, very good, very nice, yes, we also agree. But the, their understanding is, yes, you, you, you can think Krishna is supreme, and, but that's all right, you're on a lower level, and we, we don't want to disturb you, but uh, that's all right at your level. But ultimately, everything is all one. And if you want to think Krishna is supreme, you can think like that. It's up to you. Everything's nice. Whatever you like to think, it's all good. So, praise by Mayavadis is, is it's, uh, it's not that, it's not praise on the level of, it, it's coming from the platform of their misconception. It's very difficult to get, to, to get that out. Uh, they want to, they say all is one, but they want to keep a gap between themselves and Krishna. <laughs> As the Vaishnav wants to come close to Krishna, to serve Krishna, close via the parampara system. So there has to be faith, and Mayavad, it saps that faith. Mayavad, all kinds of wrong philosophies, they, they sap that faith. That uh, this Krishna consciousness means Savior Sevak Bhav, the feeling between the, word, the one who is to be served and the servant. But Mayavad destroys that. So there has to be faith. Uh, then there's a possibility of bridging the gap. So a lot of this, what's called bridge preaching, it's, it's just to try to attract people on the sensual or, or petty platform. But that doesn't create transcendental faith. So even if you get people to chant Hare Krishna, and uh, something is there. Is it? But to, to, for people to develop transcendental faith, they have to understand that I am, and they have to at least in a preliminary manner understand that human life is meant for God realization. I am an eternal living being. I'm meant to serve Krishna. Unless that faith is planted, then there cannot be commitment. 
So bridge preaching, that's, it's just, if it's not, if it doesn't bring people to the point of surrender to Krishna, then it's, it's not doing the job which preaching is supposed to do, which is to bring people to surrender to Krishna. The, at the end of the day, to use that horrible cliche, uh, we have to see, are people surrendering to Krishna? Do they understand that it's not all one? That we are eternally subordinate to Krishna? If they don't accept that, then they, 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 the gap is still there. For all the bridge preaching, the gap remains. Maybe you're still on the bridge. The, the, both the, devo the devotees go on the bridge and the kamis go on the bridge and... They're all on the bridge. But you're supposed to come over. Tamasima, Jyotir, Gama. Come out of the darkness and come to the light. Not that you remain in some hazy place in between. <coughs> so the preacher's work is to see that there is a gap. And to pull the hearers up. The Madhya Madhikari, who is supposed to be a preacher. Preaching is for Madhya Madhikaris. The Madhya Madhikari, he is, his def, the definition is Ishvare tad adhine shu, bali sheshu, dvishat shucha, prema maitri kripo peksha, yakaroti samadhya maha. The Madhya or middle level devotee is one who recognizes that there is the Supreme Lord and he offers his love to him. He recognizes that there are devotees and he befriends the devotees. He recognizes that there are innocent but ignorant people and he is merciful to them. And he recognizes that there are nasty, ignorant people and he uh, avoids them. So he sees the gap and he wants to bring people up to close the gap. So there has to be at least some, in the beginning there has to be some willingness to do so, otherwise one cannot make advancement. Ado shraddha. In the beginning there has to be some faith in the transcendental principle. Uh, if that faith isn't developed, if, if in the name of preaching people just think, oh, Hare Krishna is something nice, yeah, fun, color, and gopi dots, and balloons, and flowers, yeah, it's nice. So, well, that's better than thinking Hare Krishna, not nice. But it, there has to be, the transcendental message has to be given. The, the truth has to be spoken. The truth which people don't like to hear in many cases. That uh, otherwise without that, then the gap cannot begin to be closed. They'll take Hare Krishna, some, just some, another kind of sense gratification, harmless Nice people. But you can't pull people, you can't bring them closer. So the speaker should be on a higher level. He should, and the devotee should know, he should understand this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, how can he explain it to others? At least higher in knowledge, the speaker must himself be in a level of commitment. It's not that if someone is just speaking, they have so much knowledge, but they have to have a commitment also to serve Krishna. Their life must be Krishna. Machita madgata prana. The, 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 their life is Krishna. And then they can bring others closer to Krishna. Of course, there, there may be, just as I was speaking in a symposium, there may be people, it may be a symposium on all kinds of you. Do you go sometimes in your profession, engineers, symposiums, they all get together and they discuss different things? You, no. You avoid that. You could if you wanted. Yeah. I see. But in all professions, there are, they, they get together and they discuss different things and uh, con connected with their profession. Hmm? Conferences, yeah. Conferences, yeah, doctors, dentists, engineers, and all kinds of... They get together new ideas and they share with each other. So there may, there'll be different speakers, and among them, some, may, some are well-known and some lesser-known. 
but it's more or less it's sharing. It's not exactly disciple. The guru speaks to disciple. So that that may be there also. There may be speaking may be between peers. That's madhita madgata prana bodh bodhayanta parasparam katiyanta chamang nityang tushanti charamanti cha. In which oh, I better translate that. The uh, <coughs> do I need to translate? You you all know this verse, yeah, yeah. You're all up with that. Devotees who have made Krishna their life, they like to share with each other different talks and realizations about Krishna. So that kind of speaking coming, it's not really, there's, there's no gap between the devotees. They're just happily sharing topics of Krishna. There's, there's, they're all on the same wavelengths. There's a very nice verse in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam which is similar purport to that Machita Madgata Prana verse. Parasparanu uh, Paranu Katanam Pavanam Bhagavad Yashaha Mitura Tia Mitas Tushtia Nivritta Mitta Atmanaha. So Paraspara, that means mutual, and Mitta, not Mitya, that's a different word altogether. Mitta, that also means mutual. So, devotees among themselves, they like to discuss topics of Krishna, which purifies the whole world, and they share mutually their, their attraction to Krishna. They, they satisfy, they mutually become satisfied, and uh, in this way they become free from uh, material contamination and they become purified. <coughs> so in this way, devotees, uh, devotees who have come to the other side of the bridge, who are in spiritual consciousness, they can share topics of, they can relish topics of Krishna among themselves. There's no gap between them. Of course, there's some gap in as much as each person is in individual. The Mayavadis, they want to totally close all gaps and make everything all one. But devotees are individual. They, they recognize we're all individuals. We all have to serve Krishna. Uh, we, we're all together to serve Krishna, but individually. We don't become... We don't become so close to Krishna that we merge into him. That's a horrible idea. So speaking, preaching means to close that gap. And we find that popular speakers, they're usually popular because they're not closing a gap. Sometimes our devotees, they become, you see this Swami so-and-so, he has so many followers. And when we... When we go to a place, hardly a handful of people will come to listen. And if some Ammar or something like that comes, then thousands of people come. Uh, well, she, I don't think she speaks anything, which is probably fortunate. She doesn't have enough time. She's hugging everyone. Uh, or some Sri Sri comes and people, it'd be, it'd be big shot, big popular guru. Why are we not so popular? Well, because such popular gurus, they don't close the gap. They don't present that there's any gap, that you're on the, you're, you have to come up, you have to improve. Or if they do, it's, it's not, the, the, the idea is that, well, improve your personality, be good, be nice, smile, all this kind of thing. But that we have to surrender to Krishna, They're, they'll never say such a thing because they don't believe in it themselves. So those who speak in a way, they make it easy and make it nice for others. And uh, even among devotees, it may be someone says, yes, 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 just chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And they don't really go beyond that in terms of, of uh, giving instructions. Uh, then they may be more popular because 
There isn't a gap between them. They don't present that there's any gap, that you, you have to come up to this level. Of course, Srila, Srila Prabhupada was, that's another of his unique qualities, that, that he made Krishna consciousness seem so easy and so natural. He, he was just, he, he just, he many times said, what is the difficulty? And when we saw Srila Prabhupada, he thought, well, there's no difficulty, you just chant Hare Krishna, it's easy. But, uh, but uh, the practice of Krishna consciousness is not very difficult. Of course, for most people in the modern age, it may seem quite difficult. In India, we find many people, just if they hear that you don't drink tea or coffee, and immediately that's, uh, that puts them off so badly that... Uh, and, and onions and garlic, and whew, it's just, you know, it's unimaginable for them. It's just too big a thing for them to imagine giving up onions and garlic. And what to speak of giving up TV, it's just too much. They just can't imagine. But actually, practicing Krishna consciousness is very easy. Uh, if we understand what the purpose of life is, uh, it, it's not difficult to chant Hare Krishna, but to to let go of maya is very difficult. <laughs> Maybe you know there's a story in Mahabharata, I tell it from time to time, of in, in one king's court he had all his Brahmin ministers, so he asked them one day the question that, that uh, why doesn't maya let us go? And all the different Brahmins, they gave all their theories and theses, why why is Maya so hard to let to to let go of? Uh, why didn't she let Why didn't she let us go? Why is Maya so strong? So all of them spoke, and then there was one old Brahmana who hadn't said anything. He did. He was just listening to them all, and he said, "Well, well he he should have spoken first. Actually, he's the most senior. Why is he not saying anything?" So they're all looking at him, what he's going to say. He's just sitting there quietly. Then all of a sudden he gets up and runs over to a pillar in the hall and holds onto it and says, Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! And they say, what's on? He's gone crazy. What's, what's he doing? Let me go! Let me go! So after a few minutes of this, he stopped and said, Yeah, we're holding on to Maya and saying, Let me go. <laughs> Maya's not holding us. We're holding on to Maya. Ah. Ihari Korea Joy. Uh, what is that? Ihari Korea Joy? I, I can't remember it. Ihari Korea Joy? Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, there's a song of Lochandas, I believe it is, that says that. Uh, to. Ah, uh, Charan Najai. Ihari Korea Joy, Charan Najai. We want to conquer over Maya, but she doesn't. Well, it could be interpreted as either she doesn't let us go or we don't let go. <laughs> so we're holding on to Maya. So if if we speak in such a way that people, oh yes, very nice, just uh, just be nice, be good, smile, uh, then we may get many followers. There are many popular gurus in India today who they're their pitch is like this, that yes, yes, you be good, be a good Hindu, and maybe do some yoga, and say Om, and watch, watch the Guru on TV every morning, and yeah, that's it. There's no real commitment. But Srila Prabhupada gave commitment. You have to come up, come up, come up. Don't remain on the other side. Close the gap. So, if we find someone who's very popular, I, I would first say, let's, let's see, let's be careful now. If he's popular, he's probably not bona fide. Because we can't expect that the actual message of Krishna consciousness will be very popular. There may come a time, according to that theory, what's that called? The tipping point. There was one book written, so you know this, The Tipping Point, they teach you that in management, sales and all this kind of thing. The exact, you don't have to read the whole book, you just read one or two paragraphs and you get the whole message. There's a tipping point, this is some kind of socio-marketing thing. The, 
Just like for instance, okay, there's a respectable neighborhood. Whites live there. Middle class whites. And then, gradually, well, one Negro family moves in. And I think, well, anyway, we're all. Then another Negro family moves in. And now, but still the whites are all there. And then at one point they think there's enough Negroes and they all, whoever's left just all leaves. So there's a tipping point where it's just too much for them. And their whole area becomes a black neighborhood. So that was one example given. So it may be like that, that we're preaching and people take it up, more people take it up, and then, then there's an explosion of Krishna consciousness. That can happen. It can happen. We shouldn't think that, well, there's just 15 of us here in the room in Crawley and that's the way it is and that's the way it's going to be and we sh that's all we should aspire for. It's very possible, by Krishna's grace, that actually thousands and Srila Prabhupada said whole countries can take to Krishna consciousness. But we have to do our work. But in general, if we see some very popular... Swami or whatever. Well, if they're not preaching Krishna consciousness, we shouldn't aspire for that kind of power. We don't want that kind of power. We, we want millions of people taking to Krishna consciousness. No. Not some kind of halfway Krishna consciousness and then some Mayavad and some mundane ideas. Uh. Popularity is not our goal. We want to serve the mission of Srila Prabhupada as it is. It's very dangerous, actually, to aim to be popular. Of course, Srila Prabhupada, he, he made Rathiatras, which is, is f for mass appeal. But he never diluted the philosophy or the practice. So we should follow in that way and, and not, uh, not because, because there's a big gap between us and think that, well, let's just, they're not coming up. So we'll go, we'll go toward them. We'll go down to their level and then they can all participate. But then we lose, we lose what we have to give. Then the gap is closed, not by them becoming purified, but by ourselves becoming contaminated. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you for your patience. I know it's not that easy just to sit and listen. Hour after hour. You're on. There's only one more session, then you can be free. Well, anyway, you came here. Thank you so much for coming and listening. Hare Krishna. Any question, please? Gap between the ashrams. Gap between brahmacharis and grihastas. Difficult for the other Yeah. Um, oh, that's... Uh, I was just thinking who said that to me. That was also Jyoti Shekhar. I can't remember whether it was his own observation or he was quoting one of the disciples, another disciple, Sanyasi disciple. Maybe he was quoting Bhakti Sri Thakur himself. I can't remember just now that the, the, the Grihastas, they can never understand the Sanyasis and Brahmacharis. So that may be there. But it shouldn't be such a a, a great gap. The, the purpose is the same, whatever ashram one is in. But brahmacharis and sannyasis, they also they may not understand how the uh, difficulties that grihastas go through. The, the brahmacharis may think, well, these grihastas, they, they, you know, they hardly have any sadhana, and they're, they're just completely wrapped up in looking after their families. Well, another way of looking at it is that, that despite having so much family responsibilities, they're still chanting Hare Krishna and doing their best. That's another way of looking at it. It's, am it's amazing that in that situation with where they have so many 
commitments and anxieties, they're still trying to practice Krishna consciousness as best they can. So we don't want to increase that gap. Some gaps should be kept also. It's not that brahmacharis and sannyasis should be socializing and hanging out with grihastas all, all the time, just arriving just before lunch and all this kind of thing, uh, or inviting themselves to, uh, to lunch and uh, you can cook this and this and this and this. The, the Brahmachari shouldn't take the grihastas as a means for uh, giving them nice food to eat, though they may, the grihastas may do, but... If there's strong motive to preach Krishna consciousness, then these gaps will not be prominent. Mm. Just like in in a war situation, there may be... Srila Prabhupada sometimes gave this example that different political parties, they, they fight with each other well, the fight, they contest with each other. But when there's a war, they all come together for the national interest. That's one, probably the best known tenet of Machiavellian politics, that you always have some enemy, real or imagined, and this way you, you, uh, you unite the people. Otherwise, if they're not, if the people are not feeling there's some outside threat, then they'll be plotting to pull down the prince who is ruling. Hmm. Right. There, there's a gap between the ideal that we aspire for and the reality. Yeah, yeah. Internal gap. We should always aspire to come to a high standard. That's why, um, as I said, Srila Prabhupada in his lectures, he always spoke about the ideal. And he always pushed his disciples. But he was also uh, understanding and flexible with his disciples. We often hear about this, how Srila Prabhupada was very understanding and flexible, but often he was very demanding also. And in his books and in his lectures, he spoke about the highest level. So I understand that he was presenting the ideal, this is where you're supposed to go. But he also, he didn't, you can't demand perfection anyway. But he, he encouraged devotees to come up to that level. Understand, uh, while speaking about the highest level, he also understood that everyone's not on that level, but he spoke, this is, that this is where we're all supposed to be going. So we should speak about the ideal, what we're supposed to be. And at the same time, we, in practical dealings, we have to be flexible and uh, tolerant. Maybe not too tolerant, because if we're too tolerant of, of, non -ideal, of that which is not ideal, then there's, there's, there may not be enough incentive to become ideal. There's also, in the modern age, there's this idea of being non-judgmental. But judgmentalism is very helpful to help us to come to the right level. If, uh, if say, why are you not chanting 16 rounds? Well, don't be so judgmental. Yeah, be judgmental. The, the, the Guru Kripa told this story that he... he in the middle of the night, Prabhupada called him once and woke him up and said, Prabhupada was translating, Prabhupada called in Guru Kripa and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm sleeping. He said, why are you sleeping? He said, well, uh, I, I, I need to sleep. Why? Why do you need to sleep? He said, I, I'm not sleeping, Prabhupada said. And Guru Kripa said, yeah, well, I'm a conditioned soul and you're a Paramahamsa. Why are you not a Paramahamsa? <laughs> He drilled him, and in the end, Guru Kripa, the tough guy, he just just 
collapsed mentally. And then Prabhupada told, he said, he told me a story of Krishna and sent me back off to sleep. <laughs> So the, it, there is a gap, and we should be aware of that gap. Otherwise, if we're not, if we just, we hear a lot about praising devotees, which is good, um, but it's also required to not praise. Um, that state, uh, praise is for. Uh, <coughs> Praise has its value, but too much praise can make people proud, or if not proud, at least complacent. Whereas pointing out, you have to improve this, you have to improve that, and then it keeps, keeps devotees focused. If they think, yes, yes, everyone's praising me, very good, very nice. Then, then the incentive to improve. There has to be a balance also. Praising can also help one come to the right level. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Gundicha cleaning, he would, if he saw someone wasn't cleaning very nicely, he'd come out to them and says, oh, you've cleaned very nicely. And then that person would become ashamed. So that's, that's uh, back to front. Praising. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When we when we take stock of our own situation and realize how far we are away from where we should be, then we should be humble. Actually, uh, there's no uh, often the devotees ask me, "How can you be? Hu how can you be humble?" And then he asks them, "Well, what are you proud about?" And there's nothing to be proud about. It's just common sense to be humble. Well, what are, what are you not humble about? If you, th if you think about it, what have we got to be proud about? Nothing. It's just absolute foolishness to be anything but humble. But, well, we're fools. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're not there in the spiritual world. Hmm. Yeah, if we, real if we realize our situation, then we, we should, it should be humbling. Hmm. It can happen, should happen. The Hare Krishna explosion. There was one explosion, it's time for another. But to do that, we're going to have to really preach strongly. Uh, for instance, about explosions, Big Bang and all that. All these things, people are, people are in, uh, they're misled by Darwin and Freud and Marx. Marx, Karl Marx, very, very influential even though communism never really succeeded and it's but still the influence of marx in in this uh, very very influential and then uh, then then we have dawkins in the modern age he's not really original philosopher but not philosopher is too much of a word for him but uh yeah, there's there's so much atheistic propaganda there's a quote of Bhakti Sansar Svaitako that the aggressive pronouncement of the absolute truth against the atheistic propaganda, I can't remember it exactly, but he said it's required to, if, we, if, we're, going, if we're going to counteract this atheistic propaganda. Mm. How can we care for so many devotees if they come? Yeah, there should be a structure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Varnashram Dharma. It's required. Srila Prabhupada gave all the plans. We have to execute it. Anything else? Hare Krishna. Mind the gap. <laughs> so when you go to London and 
you hear mind the gap then we can think oh I have to close that gap between me and Krishna transcendentalize everything Hare Krishna